right? It looks like I have everyone in. So again, welcome. My name is Amberly. I work in the admissions office here at the University of Minnesota Crookston. Tonight we are talking about Welcome Weekend and what you guys can expect that weekend, what questions you have about move-in or the events of the weekend, what is Welcome Weekend, do I need to attend, um, all of that good stuff. So we also have some of your SOS leaders, some of our current Kirkston students who will be helping out with Welcome Weekend. So you'll get to start putting some names and faces to people before you even get here. And also we'll be introducing Brooke, who you have been getting lots of communication from too. So we can put a name to that face as well. And Savala from campus as well. So to start off with, um, we're gonna just do quick introductions of our Crookston crew here um, and what our roles are. So Brooke, I'm gonna have you start out with your introduction. Great, thanks, Amberly. Hello, everyone. My name is Brooke Novak. You have likely received multiple emails from me at this point, so it's nice to see you. I notice a few of the same names that I've talked to um, throughout the last couple of weeks, so it's nice to see you all here tonight. Um, my role, I am the Director of Educational Programs and Transitions here at UMC, and so my primary goal is to help you with the onboarding process, and that is uh, SOAR if, with Summer Orientation and advisement and registration, getting you all registered for classes, and then of course assisting you with Welcome Weekend and Transition Crookston then for our um, transfer and non-traditional students as well. So welcome. Savala, I'll have you go next. Okay, sorry, I thought we would go through Brooke's team first. Um, <laughs> my name is Savala DeVoe. I'm the Dean of Student Engagement and Wellness. And I apologize in advance. I am on this Zoom from home and I have a very insistent pet who has attended every Zoom meeting during work at home. So if you see him, he's almost on the payroll. Um, so just ignore him if you can. Thank you. Uh, our next three students are current students at Kirkston. Adam, why don't you tell us who you are, why you're on this call, what your major is, and maybe what year at Kirkston you are. Awesome. Hi, guys. My name's Adam. I'm a senior at UMC. Uh, my major is ag education. And the reason why I'm here is because I'm an SOS specialist, and I'm helping Brooke plan for your awesome weekend when you get here. Perfect. Estel? Hi, I'm Estel. I am an agricultural systems management major with an egg business minor. And as, like Adam, I'm also a SOS specialist. And Mercedes. All right, hi everybody, I'm Mercedes. You've maybe seen me on your Facebook page if you're in that at all. I make the YouTube videos that started up this summer at Crookston. Um, I'm not an SOS leader, but I work at the school and I major in communications and have a minor in humanities as well. So, awesome. Thank you all for joining us. Brooke, um, why don't you kick us off with what Welcome Weekend is and what the purpose of this event is? Sure. So, Welcome Weekend, outside of being my favorite time of year when I finally get to meet the students that we've been talking to all year long, um, is a moment that is in place for you to get acclimated to campus and to transition to life at the University of Minnesota Crookston. And so I know it's made out to be this scary kind of, oh, there's so much going on. I have to meet people I don't know. They're forcing me to go into these groups. But really, the whole, every event that we choose for Welcome Weekend and that we schedule has goals put in place for you to meet other students and to slowly become acclimated to campus so you're not drinking from a fire hose. That's why Welcome Weekend starts on a Friday and ends on the Monday prior to the start of, of classes on that Tuesday. And so the best part about that is you get the chance to look at what campus is, explore it, tour, different, all the classrooms as well as the different event areas on campus all before returning students come. So you have that opportunity to do that before campus gets really busy. And so this is a time for you to establish those relationships with your roommates, or if you're living alone with people on your floor in your residential halls, as well as people in your major and just other new students on campus and really become familiar. But also you're, you'll be meeting, you'll have several chances to meet other incoming students and uh, faculty, staff, your advisors, everything like that. So Welcome Weekend has a lot to do 
with really just getting everything together and you ready to rock and roll for your first day of classes. Also, I forgot to mention this at the start, um, but if you guys do have any questions, we had a bunch of questions sent to us ahead of time about some topics that they wanted students, you guys want to be covered. Um, so we will be going through some of our questions that we received ahead of time. But if you do have any questions throughout the evening tonight about stuff we said, feel free to throw them in the chat. You can chat them for everyone to see, or if you would like to send a private message, you can send a private message to me as well and we will get through as many questions that we have um, that we have time for. Um, the first one that we uh, did get quite a few questions on was um, an update to our COVID health protocols um, that just went out this week. So Savala, I'm going to pass this one off to you and if you want to kind of give us an update or kind of what we're going to be expecting for campus this fall. Sure, I'll, um, I will share what we know, and I'm going to be upfront with you and tell you that we don't know much more than what was in the communication that was shared with you. That being said, it was a very long email, and so I want to make sure that uh, we just are clear with what we have, what we know, what's moving forward. Um, one of the biggest questions that we get is, so what does this mean for me right now? Um, for now, it means that nothing changes. Um, there is no expectation that any immunization for COVID-19 would be required until FDA approval happens, if and when that happens. Um, part of the reason that we wanted this communication to go out now instead of later was because we can't predict when FDA approval may happen. It could be in a couple of weeks. It could be in a couple of months. And what we didn't want to do is have students who got here, got invested, got involved, were having a great college experience, who then were faced with this and not know that it was coming. So we wanted to be forthright with you and just say, hey, we know that at some point, if there's FDA approval, the university is going to require this uh, COVID-19 vaccine like we require MMR vaccines, um, Tdap, and, you know, a few others. So what does it mean for you as students? Well, right now it means that we've got some time to figure out logistics as far as how are we going to collect that information from students? How are we going to make sure that there is a pathway for appropriate exemption like we have for other immunizations? And what does this change for Welcome Weekend? The good news is it doesn't change anything for Welcome Weekend. There's no extra paperwork right now. It doesn't change anything as far as the events and the activities that we have. We're still asking that everybody who um, comes on campus is wearing a face covering while they're indoors, regardless of vaccine status. And that's just to keep everybody safe. Rather than asking what vaccine status anybody has, because we can't, the better approach is to just have a policy that applies to everybody and say, if you're indoors, we're going to wear face coverings. We are not on the Crookston campus at this time enforcing any physical distancing. So this is something that can be decided campus by campus. And our campus has said that the experiences that we have, um, and based on last year's experience dealing with COVID-19 on our campus, suggests that we can successfully have in-class experience and stay in class um, and have live programming together without that physical distancing of six feet. So for now, the best answer I can give is that more information will be coming. Um, make sure that you're checking your email so that we can make sure that you're getting all of the information that we have for you. You'll see more information coming from the chancellor's office, from my own office, probably even from Brooke, because we want to make sure that none of you miss the important updates that we have. But for now, we've got some time and we're going to make sure that we have a process in place for students that makes sense and that um, can work with, with students' needs. Awesome, thank you. Yep. Um, Brooke, this next question is probably directed towards you. Who is invited to Welcome Weekend? Yeah, so I'm sure this question came from a student probably based on yesterday's emails. So if you did get an email that then you saw the correction email from me just moments later, um, I accidentally had a line in there that was not accurate. And so we are not limiting guests to campus this year like we were last year. So 
If there was any confusion, I do apologize for any inconveniences or panic that I did cause. A lot of you were quick quick to respond, so I appreciate that. Um, and thanks for pointing that out so I was able to get that correction out quickly. Uh, but no, we are not limiting guests. All we ask is that you adhere to the schedule. We have put in the rotating schedule to ensure that we don't have those bottlenecks of long lines in the sun, as well as um, in cramped areas of campus. Um, so we do have a rotating schedule to alleviate some of that. And then we just ask that everyone um, it wears masks when they're inside. There is no need to wear face coverings when you are outdoors. So a lot of the events will be outdoors during Welcome Weekend to help with that. Uh, but for those in-person, indoor items um, and events, we just ask that everyone wears face coverings. Awesome. I'm gonna pull in one of our SOS leaders. How about um, Estelle? What is an SOS leader? And what is your role in Welcome Weekend? So the SOS leaders, we are a group of current students, sophomores through seniors, and our job is to assist you during the transition of first getting to college, your move-in times, and we are also gonna help you find your classrooms and get you more acclimated to campus. We are here to assist you in whatever you need in any way, shape, or form. So if you have questions, feel free to come to us and we're always there to help you out, even after Welcome Weekend. If they're in a regular semester, if you have questions, come find us, we're glad to help you. And what is our role? So what will we do? We are actually going to start our training next week and we'll be setting up everything that's gonna be involved for your Welcome Weekend. So we start Monday and we're gonna be setting up things. So getting things ready for you guys to show up on campus, getting your move-in times ready and just do whatever we can to help you guys out. Perfect. What do students find to be the most important part of Welcome Weekend? Mercedes, do you wanna take a stab at that one? Yeah, I can definitely talk about that. So I think the most important thing about Welcome Weekend is being open to do anything. I remember my Welcome Weekend, I was so nervous to be outgoing and meet new friends that it actually restricted me from getting to know a lot of people. So try not to be afraid to be outgoing and do things that you normally wouldn't do. Welcome Weekend is where you can meet a lot of your friends for the following days to come, years even. So it took me a while to figure out how to make friends and be comfortable on campus because I was afraid to give in to the Welcome Weekend process. So yeah, make the most of the weekend when it's available to you. Adam, do you have a list of what activities are coming up during Welcome Weekend that you want to share? I sure do. And man, is it a list. So the first Friday that you guys come there is probably going to be the most hectic one because uh, everyone's going to be moving in. A lot of families going to be there. Uh, so that one's probably going to be your most hectic day. Uh, but we will have a welcome home picnic on Friday at 430 for you and your family. And then we will have a mentalist at 730. And then on Saturday, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a torchlight uh, parade at 7:30, and then an ox cart street dance at nine. And then our final day with you guys, we will have uh, a rec time where we'll all just be outside in the mall. We'll be playing ultimate frisbee, or we'll have some blow up games there. And then at 8:30, we will have an ice cream social on the mall. So a whole bunch of events for you guys. I would like to know if I am invited to this mentalist, Brooke. <laughs> I think I shall come back to campus for that. <laughs> Those are always entertaining. <gasps> um, oh, this one is about times for moving in. So we're gonna jump back to kind of moving into the residence halls. Is my move-in time included during welcome weekend? Brooke, you kind of touched on that, but. Yeah, that's a great question. So most of you by now, especially if you're incoming freshman, if you're a transfer student, you wouldn't have got this email. Most freshmen got the email last night, but if you didn't, it is because we are still working on assigning you, either you're registering for classes or we are working on assigning you a group. Um, but basically in that email that comes directly from me, it will kind of list, it, it will have a long message kind of in the beginning explaining some things, and then it will go into your unique move-in day schedule. Um, there will be, of course, that's Friday, there will be Saturday, Sunday, Monday schedule to follow, but just so you have some sort of idea, 
of, okay, well, when am I moving in? That will be built into the rotation. So essentially we have all new students who are moving in on Friday split up into three larger groups. And then there are smaller groups that kind of fall within, which is your cohort of your UMC 1200 class. And so essentially we rotate you all through the same three larger rotations throughout the day. So the only reason that your schedule would be different from someone else's as in check-in time is just going to be if you start out at a different spot than your roommate, let's say, and you're wondering why that might be different. Everyone will check in either at nine or 10 a.m. Uh, in the wellness center. And that is where, so just take a look at the email that I sent you. If you haven't got one, you will get one soon, I promise. Uh, but if you're looking for planning purposes and you haven't received an email yet, just think of check-in is either going to be at 9 or 10 a.m. in the Wellness Center on campus. And from there, you, can, you will get more directions on where to go. But also in the bottom of the email, it will actually list out from start to finish of the entire day on Friday of where you will go from there. I have gotten a few phone calls today as well for parents. Um, if you do read that paragraph, it does say when you are meeting your UMC 1200 cohort and your SOS leader and get and doing the get connected session where you get your laptop and all of that. Um, during that time is the only part where we have parents um, and family sessions going on that actually um, Dr. Savella DeVoe, who is with us tonight, is leading with our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Hoffman. So that is the time when your parents or families or guests will go to that session in bead ballroom while you are meeting with your orientation group, getting your laptop and getting some of those things done. Other than that, your parents and guests and family can help you um, do the other two rotating parts of the schedule. So um, any, whether that's moving in or if that is, um, maybe it's getting your U card, parking permit, visiting the bookstore, all those things, your family can definitely be with you during those times. We just, again, if you're indoors, we just ask you to wear a face covering. Uh, but otherwise, your move-in time will be added there. And again, if you are one of the few who did not get my email last night, yours will be coming up in the near future. We're just solidifying a few things and you're probably getting registered for class and we wanna make sure you're with the right group so that we don't change your schedule three times before, before you get here in the next few days. Perfect. This is a very important one. Brooke, will students be fed during welcome weekend? Great, great question. Yes, students will be fed. In fact, on move-in day, um, on move-in day, students' meal plans are active. So when you move in and if you are like, mom, dad, I'm hungry, let's go up to Brown Dining and get something to eat before my next session, um, you can absolutely do that. In fact, you'll just be able to swipe your U-card. Um, so make sure and bring that with you. But other, other than that, you're your family can actually purchase meals to go through with you. Um, again, that is for a purchase and they can pay right, um, right at Brown Dining. But throughout the rest of Welcome Weekend, all you have to remember is your U-card and your name tag and you are good to go. I know I mentioned meal plans. Um, we do have a few transfer students who are taking part in Welcome Weekend who might not have a meal plan. They might be living off campus um, or for whatever reason, they don't have a meal plan. If you bring your U-card, um, excuse me, your name tag that you will get at check-in, that will have you covered for any meals um, throughout Welcome Weekend, so you are not charged for meals um, throughout that weekend. So no need to fear, there's food built in several areas that are not even meal time. So if you are going hungry, you're doing something wrong during Welcome Weekend. Um, that brought up another good question, Brooke. If they did not get their U-card ahead of time, will you have time for them to go get that? Absolutely. We have that built into the schedule for um, actually on move-in day. It is the um, Golden Eagle Essentials. So if you notice that in the email that I sent out, or if you wanted to follow on the schedule that is online, that's the whole Welcome Weekend schedule. If you wanted to go take a look on our website, you could do that too. But you'll see that Golden Eagle Essentials, and that is what um, we've built in time for you to get your U card. If you are a transfer student attending Transition Princeton on that Monday, we've built it into check in time as well as in the afternoon as well. So there's lots of opportunities for you to get your U card um, if you didn't get that taken care of virtually over the summer. Um, if you did get it done virtually and you did have it mailed out to you, it is very important that you do bring that U card with you. Um, that way we can 
make sure you're ready to rock for meals and other things, books, if you're buying books on your student account, things like that. So don't forget your U card at home should you have that at home currently. Um, I'm a transfer student. Do I need to attend Welcome Weekends? So the nice part about being a transfer student is the world is your oyster. You get to choose. Do you want Welcome Weekend or do you want Transition Crookston? So Welcome Weekend, like I said, is that Friday through uh, Monday where classes start on Tuesday. And Transition Crookston is kind of meant for that. Been there, done that. I've already been to a college. I'm now transferring. Um, I just kind of need to get my the need to know information. And that is what Transition Crookston is meant for. So it really is a half plus day, I'll call it, of programming meant for tran transfer students, non-traditional students um, who just kind of need that information that will get some, you know, some of their boxes checked, the items off of their list, taking care of all of that um, that day. But if you want to partake in Welcome Weekend, I've had a handful already. It's not uncommon for transfer students to partake in Welcome Weekend, especially if they're living on campus because they, they want that sense of belonging and, hey, I'm living on campus. I wanna to get to know who I'm around. I don't wanna sit in my dorm for four days, that sort of thing. You can definitely do that too. So just email me if you haven't already. And I would be more than happy to make sure that you are incorporated into the welcome weekend schedule and we can get everything set up for you and make sure that you have a group to be with all weekend um, and that you're ready to go. If a student can't make welcome weekend, um, reach out to you or what do you, what do you need? Yeah. To do? Yeah. So every year the lovely Minnesota state fair likes to, um, cause some issues for us. And so, especially for our 4 Hers um, in the group. So if you do have any, any issues, it is a mandatory welcome weekend is mandatory. And I hate using the word mandatory because it makes it sound not fun when really it's a lot of fun. I promise. Um, it's, we, we love to laugh, so it's a great time, but, um, if you can't, for some reason, please email me and we like to work out some things. If there's some things we need you to take care of at opposite times, sometimes we're able to make it work where you attend transition Crookston. Uh, but we want to make sure that you're getting some things taken care of because during, uh, welcome weekend, we do actually have some, uh, your, your first UMC 1200 class period, for example. So that is something that isn't just a get to know you day, but it's actually your first class session. And so there are some things that are really important. So if you can't make it, please reach out to me um, so we can make sure and set up um, whatever we need to, to make sure that you have that taken care of. All right, well, thank you to those of you guys who are throwing questions into the chat. We are able to get to most of them so far. So again, please feel free. You can chat me privately or you can chat the whole group if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to call on Britton now because she joined us, but she is also another SOS leader. Britton, do you want to introduce yourself, um, what you're most excited for for Welcome Weekend? And then like, what major are you? What year at Crookston are you? Sure, I'd love to. So sorry for hopping on late, but my name's Britton Fugelseth. And if that's too hard to remember, because most people have a hard time, you can just call me Brit if you see me around. Um, I'm, yes, a welcome weekend leader, and I am an agricultural education major at UMC. This will be my third year. And I think the thing that I'm most excited for is honestly you guys, and that sounds cliche, but I look back at my time for Welcome Weekend and I had such a fantastic time, which is why I'm being a leader now because I want to give back. So I'm excited for you guys to have just of an amazing time as I did at my Welcome Weekend three years ago or two years ago or whatever that is. So, yeah. Hey, Amberly, I just actually had a question come in directly that I think um, other students might benefit from and it was a question about PSEO students and so at UMC we actually invite our online and on campus PSEO students to welcome weekend and we come ready for you basically we're prepared for you so if you choose to come it is not required for PSEO students but if you choose to come we will have a group for you um 
And again, whether you're on campus or online, because we understand that some are taking online classes, but they might live in Brixton and they might benefit from having that campus connection. So we invite you to come. We will have a group assigned to you. Um, so you will have a schedule and all of that. So if you've gotten any emails from me and you're like, hold on, why am I getting these emails? I'm a PSEO student. This doesn't make sense. It's because we invite you to it. Not required, but we just want you to know that you are just as much part of the Golden Eagle family. And there's lots of great networking and resources that you can use uh, during your time here on campus. So feel free to join whatever works for your schedule. Um, if you are going to join later and miss check-in, please let us know because otherwise it's gonna to be tough to find out where you're supposed to be. And so I wanna make sure that you're not lost um, on campus and not sure where to go. But please PSEO students know that you are more than welcome to join us. Awesome. Um, when do you, when do students get their laptop? They will get their laptops on move-in day. It's actually part of the rotating schedule. It is when you will meet your orientation leaders, your SOS leaders, as well as your um, group. Uh, that is what the Get Connected session is. And so you will actually get your laptop. And the best part is, is the orientation leaders will be there walking you through kind of some life hacks about using the laptops, where to you know, find out what's going on on campus and all of that good stuff and walking you through some of it. And then you'll have time to explore it throughout the weekend and be prepared for classes uh, once they start. The nice thing about it so far is because of the Golden Eagle SOAR experience, which you all went through to register for classes, you've already gotten to know our learning management system of Canvas. And so because you have that kind of ready to go, it'll be a really good opportunity for you to explore the rest of the MyU portal, as well as just get used to the laptop that has dual purpose, turns into a tablet. You can kind of use that and get to know how all of that works all on move-in day and then after as well. Savala, so can you talk about what the face covering requirements are in the residence halls? Sure. So in the public areas of the residence halls, face coverings are required. And that is a face mask that covers your nose, chin, fits snugly, um, unless you have an exemption to wear a shield instead. And that would be a medical exemption through our nurse's office or our disability resource center. Um, so in the public spaces, we do require the face coverings within your room. So once classes start within your room or within your apartment or suite, the face coverings are not required inside your space. That's considered your family unit. Um, when we're looking at CDC guidelines for when to use face coverings. Um, so when your parents are here moving you in or family or guests are here helping you move in, it's best just to keep them on so that we're not so that you're not worrying about okay who's around me who's in this space is this somebody that i actually live with it's much easier to just go with being safe and keeping it on while you're indoors anywhere for a move-in day for incoming freshmen yes it is friday august 20th um transfer students can be moving in on Sunday, August 22nd. So those would be your two main move-in days unless you have an exemption either for athletics through a coach that you're moving in early, um, or if you have specifically worked with Brooke and residential life on a separate move-in time. But yes, for the most part, most of you will be moving in on Friday, August 20th. And should you need, if you're coming from a very long distance and you're worried about not making it at that 9 or 10 a.m. time, we do have limited spots to move in on Thursday, the day before. So if you are interested in that, please email me. Um, but we do, and then we'll work with, with uh, Res Life to see if we have any of those spots for you as well. Otherwise, the 20th for most students will be the biggest move-in day. We got a bunch of questions on textbooks too. I can kind of go over what my recommendation for students and textbooks are. Um, you will have time during your first week of classes to get textbooks. This is not something that you have to do ahead of time. Um, your faculty, I always encourage students, go to that first day of classes, read through your syllabus, meet your faculty member, 
Um, and then they will kind of let you know that first day in classes. Yep, you know, you need to go get the textbook ASAP. Um, we use it a lot or um, maybe there isn't a textbook required for that class. So go to the first day of classes, hear what your teacher has to say, ask your teachers if they don't cover it, what the textbook requirement is. The fabulous thing is that if a teacher requires a textbook, it can be found in our bookstore. So then right when you get done with class, you can walk down to our bookstore. Um, the bookstore has lots of different options for buying textbooks, buying new, buying used, renting. Um, a lot of textbooks now are going to those ebook options. So you can just download a textbook onto your computer. So you will have time that first week of classes to still go get your textbooks. The faculty are not gonna, you know, you're not gonna walk into that 9 a.m. class and at 9.01 you're cracking open the textbook. That does not usually happen. So definitely go to your first day of class, hear what the teacher has for their recommendation for the textbook. And then if it is required, just make your way sometime that first week of class down to the bookstore. So. And if you are a planner um, and you want to get them taken care of ahead, I, ahead of time, there's always a group of those students too. And I applaud you and I wish I was one of you. Uh, but uh, the bookstore will be open during move-in day uh, on Friday, as well as Sunday, and then again, Monday. So you've got several options during welcome weekend if you are getting anxious about getting anything purchased. And a little sneak Big preview, you do get a coupon at check-in. So if you're looking for some UMC gear, you have an opportunity to use that as well. Um, so Val, I'm popping back over to you. What are some of the restrictions for in the dining halls or so during like our meals together? So the dining halls are actually being reset to our regular dining hall standard, which is actually great news for the um, for the student leaders in the room who got used to having to sit at tables way away from each other. Um, we're, we're setting that back to our regular capacity. So the thing to remember is that when you're going through the dining halls, we have hand sanitizer set out. I strongly encourage you to use it. Um, we still maintain really good cleaning and safety protocols in our dining areas as far as making sure the tables are getting cleaned and the spaces are being cleaned and that you have access to make sure that, you know, you've got hand sanitizer in those pieces. When you're sitting, you can take your face mask off so that you can eat and drink. Um, we do ask that if you're going to get up and walk around the space, like when you get up to take your dishes back, or even if you get up to get a second helping of something or a dessert, that you go ahead and just slip that face covering back on um, while you're up walking around. And then when you get back to your table, you can take it off again. Um, you'll notice at your tables, and this is just kind of an aside, you'll notice at your tables that there are these little signs that say green, eat here, it's safe or red, don't sit, it hasn't been cleaned. Um, before you get up and leave, go ahead and flip that so that we know that table needs to be clean so that we're keeping the next group safe and healthy as well. Brooke, is there any difference in schedules for students living off campus versus on campus? Nope, the schedules will be the same for your group, of course. So it could differ um, depending on what group you are, like I was talking about earlier with the rotating schedule. Uh, but that is a great question because if you are living off campus and you're supposed to move in, let's say at noon, what do you do for that hour and a half time? We just ask that you kind of take care of any errands that you need um, taken care of during that time, whether that is, um, Maybe it's going and purchasing some things if you need for your apartment off campus or something like that. That's a time for you to take care of some of those things. Maybe it's meeting with financial aid and you're like, you know what, this is the time I really need to go take care of that. Um, you could also do that too. The Golden Eagle Essentials part is a little bit vague in that way where you could technically take care of that during that time too. So um, it's pretty flexible. We just ask you to stick to it as much as possible. But obviously if you're not moving into the dorms, you don't need to go hang out in a random dorm just because. So um, in fact, probably don't do that. I would, <laughs> I, I would rather you just kind of take care of some things that you need uh, to get done, or you can hang out on the mall, the campus mall. There'll be different things going on. And if um, there'll be people, SOS leaders around that you can get to know and ask questions to, that's also a great time to just get the an unfiltered peer to peer. Hey, tell me what it's like to be a student at UMC, you know, and, um, that's what they're there for. So ask questions and and you can kind of do that during that move in time. 
Savala, when do they rent loft kits? Yeah, so we have a limited number of loft kits in residential life, and that's to raise your bed for those that aren't familiar with the loft kits. Um, it's to raise your bed so that you can put your dresser underneath there. And the time you want to do that is when you show up. So if you get into your room and think you want a loft kit, go get it taken care of that day. If you think that you're going to want a loft kit, I do not tell residential life that I told you this because then they'll come after me. But get in touch with residential life and get one on reserve. That way, if you don't want it, you can just say, hey, I don't need it. Um, but again, you didn't hear it from me. Um, Heritage does not need them, though, correct? Correct. Yep, because so those beds automatically, lot like they have a loft built in if you want them. Um, but Skyberg, Centennial, and Evergreen, which none of you are living in Centennial. So... Um, all right, so I think we have gotten to most of the questions. If you have still questions, please feel free, still put them in the chat. We still have a few minutes, um, but I'm gonna turn it back over to the SOS leaders quick and Mercedes, cause you're here too. <laughs> um, what is one piece of advice that you would give a student, a new student, someone who's just starting college or someone who is transferring to Kirkston um, so making that transition to a new college, what is one piece of advice that you have? Adam, I'm going to start with you. Awesome. I think uh, the best advice I can give is don't be afraid to try new things or talk to new people. Um, college is for us to learn and grow. And this is where we really get to experiment with what we do in our life and what we can do with it. So just don't be afraid to try something new or talk to someone different. Estelle? Ask questions. There's no dumb question when it comes to learning new people or learning new campus or even like in your classes. Your professors want to get to know you and they want to make sure that you're understanding things. So if you're sitting in the back of the classroom not understanding what they're teaching, don't be afraid to ask the question. Mercedes? Um. Do not use Dawn dish soap in the dishwasher. Please don't, it will flood it. I did it twice because I didn't think I did it the first time. I thought it was someone else. Don't use dish soap, just don't do it. But also spinning off back to res life, just have fun in the dorms, make the most of it. Have girls nights, guys nights, make the most of that because that's where a lot of your memories are gonna come in, so. Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at you, but it wasn't the best experience. You, you learn I, these very adulty lessons when you are finally living on your own in the rest. You really do. I thought the first time I was like, someone flooded the dishwasher. Three weeks later, I was like, oh my God, someone did it again with my dishes in it. Oh, wait, that was me. So my bad. Don't use the dish soap. Just don't do it, you guys. <laughs> Britain. <laughs> what life lessons or advice do you have for students? Um, I would say risk boldly and live fearlessly because I had a friend tell me that and that was probably the best advice that I got when I moved into college. So don't be afraid to go out there and try those new things like Adam said, but also we completely understand that this is a new stage of your life and it can be nerve wracking. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, scared, nervous, sad, homesick, that's completely normal. And I want you guys to know that because sometimes you don't feel like it is or like you're the only one. And I can guarantee you almost 100% that you are not the only one going through that. So, and if you do need somebody to talk to, all of us SOS leaders are here to talk. If you just want to pull us aside, say, hey, Britton, I'm not feeling too good. Can we go talk? And I'll say, absolutely, let's go on a walk. Even though I'm not an exercise person. So just as long as it's not like go the weight room, good. Or even our um, faculty here on university, they're also super helpful. So if it's not even anything school-wise, if it's just not really feeling myself today, just let us know. So that's my advice. All right, well, we did not have any more questions come in. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. I hope that you learned something or got some piece of advice or a takeaway and you feel much more prepared and excited for welcome weekend we are super excited to have you guys here again in 
10 short days. I mean, it's practically only nine now. Um, if you do have any more questions, feel free. Brooke, Savala, or myself would be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. You have been getting emails from all of us, so it shouldn't be too hard to find our names in your email boxes. Um, but feel free to reach out, and we look forward to seeing you all in just a couple weeks. So thank you, everyone, and have a great night.